My experience with Alphabet so far has been nothing short of uh, exemplary. The word that would best describe them, I think, would be trustworthy. They're just a fantastic group of people. We have a fantastic team in Alpha Wealth. We're all fully qualified individuals with over 60 years of combined experience between us. I've spoken to so many different people that they feel like they've just like, a, like an extra cousin I've never met before. And they're always there with a kind of a helping hand to do whatever I need. They have a very professional approach and you feel like you're getting advice that you can trust and, and rely on. They're a company that I would definitely recommend to friends and family. Nick and the team are there at the end of a phone or at the end of an email and they will always come back to you. Alpha Wealth provide a full range service to our clients' needs just to make sure that you're doing the right things for you and getting the most from your own money, getting it working harder for you and ensuring that your family are protected. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us to this uh, live webinar. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Nick Sean Ambrose, and I'm joined by my fellow director, Cleena O'Donoghue, who's our director of business development, and also Keenan Cunningham, who's the head of our marketing department. Um, we're going to spend the next kind of 30 minutes or so just running through a few areas of personal finance to anyone who works in the pharma or medical device sector. I myself have been a financial advisor for over 20 years now, and Kleena worked in the pharma sector for companies such as AstraZeneca and Borna Ingelheim for over 15 years. So we come with a, a wealth of experience to you. Just very briefly, just before we get into, I suppose, the, the crux of the webinar this, this evening, um, just to tell you a little bit about Alpha Wealth for those of you that are not familiar with us. We currently have eight advisors based in Cork and Dublin. We're an independent company. We're very progressive. And we have over 60 years of experience between the various members. My colleague Keenan's just going to put into the chat of um, some of the ratings that we've had through trust pilots. So anyone who would like to kind of look at them at your own uh, leisure. And also, I would encourage you all, if you want to ask any questions, please do put them into the Q&A. We will address them either during the course of the webinar session this evening, or indeed, uh, we will revert back to you. But we want to make this as interactive as possible. Nick, so, you might just turn on your video there, just so we can oh, see you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I thought it was on. Um, so just really to start with, what we're hoping that you get from this webinar and we'd like to think that there will be some takeaways for everyone that is listening is essentially how to help you manage your finances how to reduce the tax you pay how to help you become financially independent i'm going to touch on company shares and also the implications of the increase in the vik for company cars and we will as i said address any questions if people want to um, ask them I'm just going to talk briefly about how we help our clients manage their finances. And the one thing I would say to you all is make sure that you do review your finances once a year and do get independent advice where possible. I do think it certainly makes sense for all of us, certainly with a lot of the challenges that we've had over the last few years, particularly with rising interest rates and so on, to make sure that, number one, you have a financial plan and you set out on what I call a menu board your objectives. And we help our clients achieve them, whether it's trying to raise funds to help your kids through third level education, whether it's so you can pay down debt, whether it's so you can buy uh, a new property. These are all objectives that we help our clients with. And I refer to what I call a roadmap and helping you navigate that in the best manner possible. And it really is worthwhile. I'm going to touch upon two areas in which you can reduce your tax because tax is a big issue for a lot of us, particularly for anyone who works in the pharma medical device sector who is paid reasonably well, but obviously is taxed quite heavily. And obviously for anyone who's earning over 50, uh, sorry, 40,000 a year, they're paying 52% tax on any income above that. So what I say to them is take advantage of the company pension scheme that you're afforded. There are two reasons to do that. One is that your employer pays into the pension as well, of course, typically ranging from rates of five up to 15 percent of seen in some companies, but also that you get this tax break from the tax man at source. So for every 100 euros that you put into the pension, you get 40 back from the tax man, which is example on the screen, and the company typically doubles that. The illustration that you can see there, which is for myself, 
I'm 49 years of age, shows that on my current pension fund, and it's important to know what your pension is worth. Mine is currently at 220,000. So the projections to a certain age, for me, it's 63, which is the age of my youngest child, age of independence, and suits me from a point of view of my own lifestyle choices, that my pension fund would be worth conservatively about 770,000 euros. Bringing it back into today's money that we show this projection for everyone that we speak to will ensure that I have a fund of just over half a million, which gives me a tax-free sum of a quarter of that, which is 127,000, again, in today's money, and an income of about 30,000 a year plus the state benefit. And I feel that that's appropriate for my lifestyle needs um, from 63 onwards. And Nick, what's the maximum amount that somebody can put into their pension? There are really generous limits for people. And sometimes people think that it's just the limit of which their employer pays a contribution. So for example, if you're in a company that your company pays 5% of your salary, you think that maybe 5% is your limit. It's age related. So for anyone in their 30s, it's 20% of their earnings, their basic salary. If you're in your 40s, it's 25%, 50s, 35% and so on. So you can see that for somebody who's on, say, 80,000 a year in their 40s, that's a pension contribution of 20,000 per annum that they can put into their pension, get 40% back, which means that they save 8,000 euros in tax. So it's a net cost of a thousand euros a month, and that will build up a significant pension fund to allow them to retire early. I suppose having worked myself in the farm industry for almost 20 years, I had a pension with Irish Life and was unsure of its performance and if it was invested really in the right funds. Irish Life used to come into us maybe once a year and present on the fund performance. But can you offer any advice to people that are in this position, you know, with pensions, maybe through different providers? The, the major thing I say to, to all of you is that um, you're not pension experts. And a lot of us don't necessarily always understand the choices that we make. And sometimes it's a case that you tick a box when you join a company's pension scheme and you kind of forget about it. Some of you may have more knowledge about your pension. You may access a portal and you can see where your pension funds are invested. But the key thing is that as an independent broker, we show people where your pension funds are invested and how to make sure that you maximize the opportunity. So, for example, let's say uh, Cleaner used to work for Borne Engelheim. They had an Irish Life pension. They um, have choices within their pension scheme, and we help them manage this pension within Irish Life. They have no ability to move outside of that. The example on the screen there shows a comparative of two different Irish Life pensions, which are actually in the same risk category, but have varied in their performance. One of them has more than doubled the performance of the other. Zurich are another provider in the Irish marketplace that manage a lot of the pharmaceutical companies' pension schemes. And again, like that, you can see there's a big variation in two funds that are in the same risk category. So the key point I'm trying to make here is that not all pension funds are the same. Get independent advice and make sure that you maximize the opportunity. A lot of people are uncertain about which type of risk level they should be on. And obviously, they're concerned about the falls that we experienced in pension funds last year. And as I say, for the sake of an hour, which we provide independent guidance to you for, I do think it's warranted to check in with someone. And more important is that you do that once a year to make sure that you keep on track. And Nick, you mentioned as well that not all pensions are the same. I suppose having worked in two different pharma companies, um, I have many friends as well in the industry. Some of them had defined benefit pensions. Um, can you offer any advice on these pensions or what the situation is with them? Yeah, so defined benefit pensions were kind of seen as the gold standard previously. But back in 2016, the pension rules changed that allowed people to basically benefit from uh, another type of pension scheme, which is available to most of us, where there are certain advantages to that. You can draw the benefits earlier than your normal retirement age, for example, that if you pass away post-retirement, that the fund doesn't pass with you, it goes to your estate. And that in some cases, the value that that pension will accumulate to will be worth more than the defined benefit scheme. Now, there are certain advantages of staying in the defined benefit scheme. But the key thing is that you have a professional that independently qualifies 
the differences and shows you whether it's better for you to stay or to move. And what we do for our clients is, and it's not just for defined benefit schemes, it also applies to previous companies that perhaps you may have worked with where you have a fund. And whilst you may feel that like it's trivial or you're not entirely sure about it, or you may have worked in the UK and not really familiar with where that pension's at, we help our clients understand the choices that they have. And more importantly, is that we amalgamate them in the right manner. I have a pension in the UK, I have a pension from previous employment, and I have a pension with Alpha Wealth. And I'm, I'm you know, managing them effectively, and I know exactly where they're invested and getting the most from them. I'm just going to talk briefly there about a second tax scheme. And this is the two ways in which I feel that we can all benefit from reducing the tax we pay. And basically, this is a personal investment scheme available to all high rate taxpayers. Um, and sorry, I, I did, I forgot to mention, um, we're just going to pop up a poll here, guys, of um, anyone who has an old company pension scheme. Um, do you have, I suppose, knowledge about where it's invested? And you might just answer the poll just while I'm going through this. Um, thank you, Keenan. So just in terms of the other tax scheme that's available to individuals, you can invest a lump sum of money. It's a scheme called the Employment Investment Incentive Scheme. It's a government-backed scheme. And what it allows you is an opportunity to put personal money away that you may have in a bank, credit union, or post office that is earning very little interest. And as long as you can afford to invest for four to five years, you will get a 40% tax back on that investment contribution. So for 10,000, it's 4,000 euros that will be given back to you, as well as profit from the investment company that you place that with. Now, this is really a, an opportunity that I feel is often missed by higher rate taxpayers, partly because they're not familiar with the scheme. We provide independent guidance and we show you the best companies in this space to consider. We are doing a separate webinar on the 29th of March. Uh, Keen and my colleagues are gonna put into the chat some of the upcoming webinars that we have. And it is one that I would suggest would be worth listening to. All of our webinars are 30 minutes. They're all complimentary and they're all without obligation. And we're more than happy to share um, our insights in terms of how we feel that you can benefit from this. But as I say, I do think it's a really big opportunity, particularly if you're in receipt of a bonus once a year, or indeed it's if you receive company shares and that obviously you redeem them and you get the cash into your account. So Nick, you've spoken about pensions as one way to reduce tax, and now EIIS is another way to reduce tax. Can you maybe explain what the difference is between both and why somebody should maybe invest in their pension or in EIIS? So what we do as financial planners is we try and help our clients find balance. And typically for me, um, pensions make sense on a monthly basis through payroll. It reduces risk because you're buying the units every month and it's just less hassle. EIS works extremely well for people who have monies personally in a bank account that is not being used. You can invest that money directly and get tax relief back directly from the government. And the key thing is it's about your financial objectives because obviously pensions work better for people who don't have an requirement for that money over say 10, 15, 20 years, depending on how old they are. Whereas EIS works well for the shorter period because obviously it's only a four to five year scheme. So the short answer really is, it does depend, but I like the idea of being at least aware of both opportunities and making sure that you're maximizing your own personal circumstances. I'm just going to move on. And just before I do, thank you for those uh, that have answered the poll questions. Um, it seems that most people are probably um, unsure what to do with their pension scheme. And again, I think it'd be important to get some independent guidance and advice on that. I'm just going to touch on financial independence, guys. And really, I suppose the theme of what we do with clients is we help our clients achieve what I call financial independence. And you notice I haven't said retire, and it isn't necessarily about retiring. We're talking about this kind of phased approach of people who are working less hours, perhaps, in later years, or being able to work in a different role. Maybe you've been made redundant by a company, and you're not going to get the same job necessarily. You may be on a lower wage. And it's really about getting to a point where you have an income stream that will cover your expenses, that you don't have any debt, and that you have all future major expenses covered. And that's what I'm classifying as financial independence. 
and we help our clients get to that point. And Nick, with many, I suppose, financial commitments increasing, you know, mortgage interest rates are currently rising nearly month on month. People have very high educational costs when it comes to children's education. How do you propose that they can reach financial independence? We help our clients in a variety of areas, and I'm just going to touch upon them um, in terms of helping you save money in your mortgage. We're talking to clients at the moment independently about how we can reduce the cost for you on your mortgage, making sure that you're not going to get caught by future rate rises, reducing the cost of insurances such as mortgage protection, house, car uh, insurance, health insurance for those of you that don't have it provided by your employer, and indeed the cost of loans, and we've touched on ex-company pension schemes. But in terms of the main thing is, that, and interestingly, I got a question earlier from someone um, who asked about getting a mortgage in their early to mid 50s and the prospect of could they do that? Now, it is possible. But if you think about what I said earlier about the logic of using your pension schemes effectively, what I say to some individuals is that if you have a mortgage, let's say, that's running until you're 65, but if you're building up a, a pension pot that will enable you to draw benefits at 60, you're trying to basically get to a point, and it's kind of this kind of sweet spot where you can draw your pension down, pay off your mortgage early, and become financially independent. And we're using, I suppose, the different financial tools and helping our clients understand, and we cash flow forecasts for you, showing you how you can get to that point in the least time possible with the least amount of pain. I'm just going to talk briefly about the first, I suppose, step that we do, and this is something that is available to all of you. Um, I would encourage you all to do it if you haven't already done it this year. On our website, we have a budget calculator. It's an independent tool that's provided um, to all individuals. I'll be, I'm happy to share it with you um, either this evening or indeed uh, we can email it separately to you where you just populate it with your income and expenses, and we help you manage your money better. We help you ensure that you're not spending your money in the wrong areas. And it's not about trying to get you to reduce the cost of you know, your um, household groceries. It's about you reducing the cost of certain committed expenses that you're spending too much on. We often come across clients that have bought insurance policies that they don't necessarily need. We've come across uh, financial brokers that are looking to try and sell income protection to those that already have it. Um, there are many instances, and what I'm really saying to you is it's really worth getting this financial health check done, especially, I suppose, at this time of year, you know, we talk about spring cleaning. This is a, a thing that we're trying to kind of encourage all of you to kind of take advantage of. I talk about compartmentalization. I spoke earlier about helping you to sort of reach your financial goals. And it's really just about understanding, like, the money that you have left over each month. What are you using it for? Is it something that you need to do in the short term? Is it something in the more medium or indeed longer term? And then, as I said earlier, about helping you find the right balance and indeed the right financial product that suits you. Um, we're coming across lots of people that, you know, are not availing of ABCs, additional voluntary contributions to their pension. And it's maybe an understanding that, you know, it's going to buy years of your working life. And I say to people, make hay while you can. And if you have an opportunity to you know, put money into these types of uh, savings vehicles, you should consider that. We set up uh, something called the Alpha Savings Club last year. This is uh, a savings account for that medium term category. So anything more than three years, but less than your retirement term, where you're saving for something like kids' education, or you're saving for a wedding or for a new car, where you can put money into an account that grows typically between three and 5% a year, where you can ex exit it at any time and that it will earn interest significantly greater than the banks. And we found this to be a very, I suppose, attractive savings vehicle, particularly while bank deposit rates have remained very low. And we certainly would encourage you to consider this, obviously, as part of your overall financial plan. There's a little bit of information there. And for any parents out there, and I'm a parent of four children myself, we talk about the cost of third level education. And it's not to try and give you kind of this holistic figure and say, you must have somewhere between 30 and 40,000 a year uh, for your child over the three to four years that they may need the money for. This is about saying, do the best you can with the monies that you have available to you. Make sure that you are 
trying to plan effectively, you can see there that if you start college education from a young age, the contribution levels can equate to approximately the child allowance that you receive. However, if you start late, you're going to have to make some additional payments or indeed, hopefully you might get some family help and so on. And then it's about utilizing that money effectively in the best type of account possible. And as an independent broker, we deal with all of the different companies and product providers out there, including the insurance companies. And we make sure that you get the best product at the lowest fee possible. Um, I'm just going to talk briefly about company shares. Many people I speak to in the pharma med medical device uh, sector get a little bit confused at times around things called RSUs, ESPPs. They're not sure what they should do, whether they should buy more shares from their bonus and so on. Shares tend to be tax efficient when you're purchasing them. You tend to get them at a discount. You may receive them, some of them free, depending on your, the company you work with. My general rule of thumb is that when those shares become available, and sometimes there's a three-year vesting period where you cannot sell those shares, but when they do become available, I would suggest that you would consider selling some, and typically that you do it often. And the reason for that is, firstly, you get an annual tax allowance. So if those shares have made a profit, you will benefit from not paying tax in the first 1,270 euros in that year. The second reason, and the most important reason, in my opinion, is to reduce risk and diversify your asset base. I come across a lot of clients that don't have any investments. They've underfunded their pension, but they end up with 15, 20, 50, 100,000 euros worth of shares in the company they work with. And it doesn't provide diversification. We're not in the industry of speculating. I would strongly encourage people to consider their situation, speak to an independent financial broker, either Alpha Wealth or indeed any other financial broker that you're dealing with, but make sure that you get independent guidance and that typically my rule of thumb is that you shouldn't have more than 20,000 euros worth of shares in the company that you work with. Even if it's the case, if you invest in other schemes like the EAAS scheme that I mentioned earlier, to get a tax rebate on that. And it's really worthwhile exploring this and we can help you understand and navigate um, these for your own situation. So Nick, on that, it was, I worked in two different companies. One was AstraZeneca where we received shares and the other was privately owned, so we didn't. But for anybody that does have um, company shares, what are the tax implications um, if they want to sell them? In the vast majority of cases, the tax treatment is capital gains tax, which is currently 33% in Ireland. So say, for example, you got a lump of shares that you paid 10,000 euros for, and they were worth 20,000 euros at the time of sale. Now, again, we can help you to understand that because capital gains tax is a self-declaration tax, and it's definitely not worthwhile just ignoring the fact that if you have sold those shares, that, you know, if you haven't paid the tax, my advice to you would be to get some independent advice, and we can help guide you because revenue are clamping down quite heavily on people who have sold shares and haven't claimed the tax on them. Now, in terms of the tax treatment, um, basically, obviously, an example I use there, you would pay roughly 3,333 euros of tax, but you have your first 1,270 euros tax-free. If you had sold those shares, however, in two and a half tranches over two and a half years, you wouldn't have paid a sort of tax. And that's why I'm saying it's really important to understand the opportunity for you and that you are availing of that allowance. Um, and that's something that we do for our clients in a very straightforward basis. What we offer clients, guys, is a really straightforward one hour review where we do this for you. We do all the heavy lifting and it's very much based on giving you this guidance that will best benefit you. Just gonna go on to the changes to company cars on VIK. And just before I do that, uh, my colleague Keenan's going to put up a second poll and the final poll of this evening. Uh, we just wanna kind of get a gauge on, I suppose, people out there in terms of company cars that you have. And just while he's doing that, I'm just going to mention, for those of you that have a company car, and obviously since the start of January this year, you would have noticed that the benefit in kind has increased Typically, the rates went from 6 to 30%, depending on the number of kilometers that you were doing in a given year, up to a maximum of um, 9, sorry, to 37.5%. And it's also based on the CO2 emission of the car, the vehicle. So the best way I can describe that is to say that 
if you say, for example, had a company car worth 37,000 euros, now I appreciate that might be quite low for some of you, but the doing say 25,000 kilometers per year, emitting 150 grams per CO2 uh, per kilometer, you would have had to pay on the previous rates, a uh, BIK of about 8,880 a year. The equivalent and the same car, uh, the equivalent BIK on that would be roughly 12,500. So it's almost gone up by you know, more than half. And in some instances, we've seen a massive increase for individuals. So, and, and unfortunately for electric vehicles, whilst there was this grace given um, for those of you that may have opted for electric only vehicles, that is being phased out and effectively that will be reduced down to zero, i.e. you'll pay full benefit in kind under the current regime in the next three years. Well, it's good to see that I suppose the majority of people on the call haven't been affected. So 81% of people haven't been affected um, by the recent BIK changes. But for those that have, have you any recommendations? And I know the BIK situation has been an ongoing kind of issue. Um, however, the recent changes have really impacted people. So what, what would you recommend? So like, I have quite a few friends working in the farm industry and um, Obviously, look, it's not ideal, especially if you've committed to a car. Um, obviously, you wouldn't have necessarily been aware of the fact that these changes were going to come into effect. There's a lot of small things, I suppose, I can suggest you that there's no blanket solution. But for example, if you have the opportunity to give back the company car and take a mileage allowance, generally speaking, I would suggest that it would be worth exploring this. And again, we can run the numbers for you um, and, and hopefully help you come to a, an informed decision on that. Some opportunities to get a commercial vehicle. If any of you have your own company, for example, um, that might be an option that would be worth exploring. Obviously, without stating the obvious, doing more kilometers or having a smaller car would help, of course, particularly with uh, lower CO2 emissions. But really, the solution to me is if you can't do anything, then you have to look at other areas of your financial plan and see where they can be improved. And I'm don't want to keep repeating myself here, but I don't believe that all of us do the best we can with our mortgage, with our mortgage protection, with our house insurance, and so on. And if you can get those costs down, um, I gave many instances over the course of the last few weeks of cost savings for people. I've seen clients who have paid more than sort of 100 euros a month for mortgage protection recently, and we've given them uh, equivalent quotations for less than a quarter of that. And there really is a big opportunity. And it's not just at renewal stage. A lot of people think that you can't do it in three year, and that's not correct. Uh, mortgages, I think that for a lot of people who have suffered increase in their mortgage costs, we can start to kind of put that um, under, uh, I suppose, manners now and help you navigate the mortgage market for the next few years. So really, it's a bit of a, I suppose, a, 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 not a, a, an essential solution, but it's about trying to make the most with the opportunities that are there. We're offering um, individuals a one hour full financial consultation where we do the heavy lifting, as I said, we don't need any input from yourselves. We charge 199 euros for that. A lot of advisors are going online now charging anything I've seen up to 3000 euros for the same service. And I do think that hopefully we've given you an indication this evening of how we feel that we can help you save money in these uh, various areas. Finally, just before we kind of get into any questions, I just wanted to mention the webinar that I spoke about earlier, how we can help you reduce the tax you save. I'm gonna dive a bit deeper into the EAAS scheme, the Employment Investment Incentive Scheme. And I'm gonna talk about that on Wednesday, the 29th of March at 1 p.m. If you can't make the webinar, let us know and we can forward you on the video. Um, and I would like to suggest that it would definitely benefit you. If anyone's listened to this, obviously recorded and the webinar's already passed, let us know and we'll obviously send on the recording and do listen out to any future webinars that we have. And obviously you can follow us on our various different social media sources and obviously through our website. So Nick, I'm gonna ask you a question just on the EIIS. Um, is it available for sole traders? It is, it's available for all individuals, but it has to be done personally. So a sole trader typically is a personal individual. And yes, in answer to that, um, it is absolutely available to sole traders. 
And are there any tax efficient ways to help fund home improvements, for example, energy upgrades, insulation? There's no tax efficient ways as such, but there are certain, I suppose, credits that you can get. I got one recently for home renovations that, that I did at home. So I would suggest that you would explore them and make sure that you're claiming all of the reliefs that are available to you. I can flick you on um, if you want to email me directly. Obviously, just in relation to how to go about doing that, but there are some grants that are available for various different installations in your house. And in terms of the EIIS, is there an optimal time to sign up for it? So the EIS scheme is done over a calendar year. So, for example, we're obviously into March 2023. Um, you can sign up to the scheme this month and you can sign up to schemes up to the end of December. There's no optimal time as such. The schemes generally tend to be advertised around um, August, September, October, so in the sort of the later kind of period of the year. But we are finding more and more interest because some people who work in the pharma medtech uh, sector, medical device sector, um, receive bonuses and they are in a position to sell shares early in the year and they want to find a suitable vehicle, otherwise the money might be spent elsewhere. So we have, I suppose, started to position our clients with opportunities in that space. And as well as that, some of the best companies may not need that finance later in the year. So I'd say it's worth definitely exploring and keeping an eye on the opportunities. And as I said, if you want to get information from us on the webinar on the 29th of March, we will be showcasing three specific opportunities that we believe make sense two of which are available now and won't be available later in the year. And one of them is available at the end of the year, but is not available currently now. And going back to pensions on the slide you showed on performance, if somebody has a, a, an Irish life um, pension scheme from an old employment, can they move it into a Zork one or does it have to remain with Irish life? Anybody who's left employment or if you have a pension scheme, a personal pension saved from a previous life, it's definitely worth looking at the costs that you pay. I think the fees are probably the biggest inhibitor to performance, but also making sure that you're in the best performing funds. You can see there on the screen, the difference between say the Irish Life Consensus Fund and Zurich's Prisma 5 Fund, and they're in the same risk category, is quite stark. Obviously over the last five years, for example, there's almost 50% outperformance since these funds uh, would have launched, which is dating back over 10 years, there's almost double performance. Now, again, I'm not here to you know, position you to say that you should be in Zurich Prisma 5. There are other funds in different uh, insurance companies, and it's about making sure that we find the right fund for you, depending on your search situation, your age, and your term to retirement, and so on. And last question then for anyone with money sitting in the bank at the moment. Um, what advice can you offer them? You need to consider what the purpose of that money is. And I spoke earlier about compartmentalization. So if you need the money within three years, leave it in the bank. There is no better place. Maybe put it into a separate account where you're not going to go at it on a, on, on a weekend. But if that money is for anything beyond three years, so if it's something that you're planning to do, as I say, maybe buy a house in five years' time or get married in a few years, whatever your objective is, if it's three years plus, I would seriously look at the likes of the Zurich um, savings plan that I spoke about earlier. It is the best of its type, and we offer it the lowest fees. If you don't have any medium-term objectives, then maybe consider looking at your pension or the EAAS scheme to reduce the tax you pay. And it might be a combination of, you know, we come across clients who, as I say, do receive monies on occasion, it might be a gift, inheritance, sale of shares, bonus, and it's about helping you make the right choices. And they may vary at given years. You know, we've all been through different situations uh, over the last number of years, and we want to just help you make sure that you pick the right things. And we act obviously independently, as I said, I think that's it with the questions, Nick. Maybe if you just want to um, give your contact details if anyone wants to follow up with you afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you very much again for your participation. And I do appreciate all the questions. Um, I hope we've kind of been able to sort of give you something to take away from um, this evening. 
And obviously for anyone who's listening on playback, please do feel free to reach out to us. We can send you a copy of the recording uh, the video if you have missed any of it, or indeed if you want to pass it on to your partner. I should have mentioned earlier, the reviews we do are typically over Zoom. We can do them in person and they are available uh, with a partner as well. And it's about making sure that you're getting the most from the financial review. My contact details obviously are on the screen there, nick at alphawealth.ie. You can contact me on my mobile. And we want to make sure, like we're happy to answer any questions you have. Do email me, there's no financial cost to you. But booking in for the financial review, um, paying the 199 euros for not just the one hour, but it does envelop all future um, engagement. We do provide any follow-up reviews with you uh, as part of that cost. And I do think that you'll definitely benefit hugely from that. Do please feel free to keep an eye out on future webinars, as I said, particularly the one on the 29th. And if anyone would like to kind of come back to me specifically on any of the areas that I've addressed, please let me know. Um, I'd be happy to do that with you. Thanks very much for your time this evening. Um, thank you, Keenan, um, for um, hosting the, the webinar with us. And obviously, we look forward to speaking to you in the near future. Enjoy the rest of your evening. and.